What's going on guys, MV Astro here, back at it with another video. So in today's video guys, we're gonna be reviewing, looking at the setup, and then getting my first impressions on the newest quad from T-Motor. This is their Micro HD quad that was manufactured from Diotone. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is the box that it actually comes in. Micro HD just got reinvented. You got the T-Motor there. You got their social media stuff there that you can scan. And then we got some more elegance refining clear and black and canopy so that's what we got with the box nothing too special for me but anyway let's go ahead and open this bad boy up i will tell you i already opened it up i already took a look at it but i have not flown it and i have not looked at the setup so that we're going to be doing that together so in the box we do get two small little baggies and then of course we get the quad itself let's go ahead and put the box aside there to the back and let's take a look at the, the stuff that comes with the quad. So you get some small little two inch propellers. This is the two inch version. I'll talk a little bit more about the different versions that there is available here once we get into the quad, but we do get some props. They look to be 2540s, which are from Gemfan. Yep, they are from Gemfan. You can see that they have that Gemfan logo there. So they are using Gemfan props there to include with their HD micro. And then here we get a stuff little bag with goodies inside. We get some zip ties in case we need it. We get uh, a Diotone, there we go. Manufacturer is Diotone, so we do get Diotone um, battery strap in there. We also get some more different screws, which is pretty nice that they label them. For those people that are new to micros, you are able to see M2 by three, M2 by four, M2 by fives, M2 by six, M2 by seven, M2 by eight, and of course nine. So those are the M2 screws and the different lengths and the little packages for, uh, for those people that aren't familiar with the sizing and stuff like that. And then here we have, it looks to be some 3M sticky. Let me see, let me actually raise this up to see if it is sticky. No, it's actually not sticky. It's like a small little rubber, maybe for the battery down below or maybe to uh, put on the little arms for protection or something like that. Although this is a uh, bottom slung battery. So I don't really know 100% what this is for, but I think it's more for the battery down here at the bottom to really give it a little bit of stick there. But they do include that. And then let's go ahead and empty this whole bag out. And then see, so here I'm, a, I'm assuming these are just extra hardware for the frame. They do seem to be appropriate size for the frame, such as like for the canopy here, possibly for some motors and stuff like that. So they do include that. And then they also have the um, uh, extra wiring harness for the flight controller. That way it connects from the flight controller going to the ESC there. And then some more screws here, some more hardware for the stack or even the, um, the frame itself. And then they also do include the small little buzzer there if you do want to add a little buzzer in case you fly out where there's high grass or you just simply like to have a buzzer. That way whenever you crash you know exactly where to go. You hit that switch and you hear that buzzer going. And then they include a little XT30 and I'm assuming this is possibly for uh, charging your batteries or if you don't have an XT30 battery you could possibly put that small little battery which that's exactly what I'm going to be doing because I don't have no XT30 batteries. But that's what comes inside the box whenever you receive your diatome. So now let's go ahead and clear this space up and show you guys the HD Micro. Alrighty guys, so here we have the newest Micro HD Quad from T-Motor and their collaboration with Diatone. So first off, I want to apologize for my voice. My voice is kind of going away. I'm a little bit sick, so I do want to apologize that beforehand. Second thing, this video may be a little bit long, but that's just because I want to go in depth in which electronics are provided when you get the diatone from T-Motor. And as well as, I want to of course get my first impressions flight. Since I'm not usually flying a micro quad here on this channel, I want to get my first impressions and tell you guys what I think of the micro class as far as quads glow. But anyway, I want to start off by telling you that T-Motor does have this quad here in three different versions. This specific version here is a two inch version. They also have a 2.5 inch version and a 3 inch version. Primarily the things that changes as we go up in uh, prop size is the motors. These specific motors are the F-15's 6000 kV. And uh, let's go ahead and actually start breaking down the different electronics and what this whole quad is consisted of. So first off, let's start off with the frame. So the frame is carbon fiber here. It's of course provided by Diatone. They do sell the frame alone. So if you ever do break the frame and you don't wanna buy a whole quad, they do have the quad. Uh, I'm sorry, the frame by itself. And the frame by itself costs about $20. 
And uh, the main difference here though with the frame, usually Diatone doesn't have the T-Motor logo there, but of course this is a Diatone and T-Motor collaboration, so they do integrate that T-Motor logo there on their canopy. And the canopy here, it is a nice polycarbonate plastic, so should be very, very durable in those crashes. And of course it has these little lips there to sort of protect the lens. As you can see, it does kind of protrude there a little bit still, but it is better than no protection. So let's go ahead and actually jump in more into towards the stack and those motors. So like I said, these are the F series family motors. They're the F15s. These in specific are the 6,000 kV edition motors from the F15s. Coming into the most important part, which is the 20 by 20 mounting stack there is the ESC. So let's go ahead and jump into the specs of the ESC. So the whole stack here on this micro quad is provided once again by Diatone, of course. This is their whole Mamba stack that they do provide for individual sale. The stack usually sells for about 40 bucks and that comes with the flight controller and ESC. But in this case, I'm gonna go over the specs of the ESC and then slowly move up the stack. But anyway, first off, I'm gonna start off with the input voltage. The input voltage that is recommended for this ESC is two through four S. So T-Motor also recommends to run this specific two inch micro on a 4S or 3S for those people that cannot really control 4S. But uh, shout out to my friend for actually providing me with some 4S 450 size milliamp packs. Uh, T-Motor does recommend this uh, milliamp pack as far as the two inch version goes. You could of course go up to a, a 600 or even an 800 or in like an 850 or so if uh, you are running the three inch quad. But as far as the two inch quad, they do recommend a 450 either 4S or 3S. But let's move on with the specs of the ESC. So the ESC is n unfortunately not a 32-bit ESC, therefore it is running BioHeli S, but the good thing about that, me being a Mac user, I do have the access to the Google app of the BioHeli suite, therefore I am able to flash and update and turn my rotation for my motors through the BioHeli suite app through the Google Play Store, so I do like that. It also does come flash with the newest version of BioHeli, which is 16.7. The ESC is a 20 amp ESC, rated up to 4S, of course, like I just mentioned, and it is capable up to D-Shot 600. Another thing that this BC is unfortunate of not having is a BC. Uh, so, therefore, you don't have any power regulation, but it is okay because the flight controller is able to take full voltage from a 2 to 4S battery. Moving right up to the flight controller. First off, this is, of course, again, a 20 by 20 stack flight controller, which it is compatible, of course, with the ESC because this is Diatone's nice little flight controller and ESC stack. The flight controller specifically is an F4 board, which is actually very nice that we're able to see 20 by 20 flight controller. The flight controller also does come with the MPU 6000 gyro. It does come with OSD, so Betaflight OSD, it is enabled on that. That is where you could change your PIDs, uh, you can see the different voltage for each cell, the overall voltage. I'll go ahead. Uh, unlike the ESC that doesn't have a BC for any power down regulation, the flight controller of course does because to provide power to, for example, a receiver. Because one thing about this package that it does not come with, although it is a basically a plug and play, it's not a BNF, meaning it's not bind and fly, you will have to add your own receiver. And... Um, those pads right here, let me see if I can zoom in for you. As you can see, this wire, this red, white, and red wire here that I already added that is running across is my XSR, RXSR receiver that I added on there. And if you could go ahead and pause the video here, and I could also put a screenshot on the screen for you right now. That way you guys can see where I ended up soldering these wires. But basically, I'm running S bus on it right now, and this here is my white wire all the way at the end, and then it comes down to the red about two pads down and is the red and then right next to the red is the ground for the receiver so that is it as far as the flight controller goes and then moving up to the stack that basically makes this a uh, micro have its hd name and for those people that aren't familiar this is the run cam split mini 2 uh the first one was a regular size stack but of course the mini split 2 is a 20 by 20 stack which is actually very very nice now we're able to have hd footage on micros previously of course you wouldn't be able to mount a gopro session or better yet a full size gopro on a micro but now with the technology advancing of course with run cam we're able to put a nice hd camera on a micro so um 
If we go over to this side of the quad, you can see that the quad does have that SD, micro SD slot there, and that is because we are able to put an SD slot, an SD card in there, and then record full HD from the camera without having to have a GoPro. And this is what makes this nice micro very, very unique from other micros that I personally have seen. This is the first HD quad I see. I, I'm sure there is others out there. And in fact, I will be reviewing another HD quad uh, very, very soon. Another HD micro that is very, very soon. So I do see the uh, Runcam Mini split uh, being a very, very good advantage to being able to have that nice HD footage for those people that really like uploading an HD up onto YouTube. And then moving up to the VTX, the VTX is provided by Runcam once again, just like the whole FPV camera is and the whole HD system is. The VTX is provided, of course, by Runcam once again. That is their TX200 and it is able to do 25 milliwatts. So if you are planning to fly with others at a race, maybe a local multi-GP race or something, you are able to down put it to 25 milliwatts. And then whenever you're by yourself, just flying around through trees and everything, you are able to go up to 200 milliwatts. So it does both 25 and 200 milliwatts. And then if we turn it around back this way, you can see that it does come with a whip antenna. I don't know about the positioning here that it does come. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a little bit iffy about that, but I'm gonna leave it just like that, just due to the fact that that is how it comes out of the box. But I am gonna leave it like that. And then I just wanna show you real quick, for those people that are curious, how I mounted my, my receiver is. So of course, I mounted it here. I'm basically running my wires right up the side of the stack. They are a bit protected by the flight controller here, so they are running a little bit under that. And then my there's not really a lot of space for the receiver, but therefore I mounted it right here, right behind the camera. It still gives the camera enough space to tilt if I need a little bit more tilt, and it is there, very simple to access. And then as far as the antennas go, this is actually a very nice, neat feature that the um, frame does come with. So it does come with these, with these uh, nice little antenna mounts there, but the way I ran it, so my uh, RX is mounted upside down. You can see my antennas running down there through the small little holes down here. And then I ran my antennas underneath the strap to basically uh, give them a little bit of protection and of course did not get in the way of the battery when I strap it there. And then coming up to the back, I put it back in through the holes and then coming up the small little mount that they um, provide for the antennas for the RX. And then here we go, we have them right there sticking out away out of the prop. So makes it for a nice, really clean look, which I really, really like. So shout out to Diatone for designing that frame and that small little um, mount there for the antennas. But those are the complete specs of the quad. One last spec I wanna give you guys is the weight. So let's go ahead and weigh this bad boy. All right, here we go. Last thing before we go outside and finally get our first impressions fly on a micro quad, let's go ahead and weigh this bad boy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this box there so I could kind of lift the quad up. Let's go ahead and tear it out. We're at zero, zero. And now let's go ahead and put this bad boy on the scale. And weighing in, just without props, we're looking at 91, exactly 91 grams. And then let's go ahead and put the props on top just to see how much weight that adds for an olive weight with the props. We're looking in at 95 grams. And then with this 4S 450 milliamp battery, let's go ahead and see if we could balance it there and get a overall olive weight whenever we are actually flying this quad. So let's go ahead and mount it on there. There we go. All right, and then for the olive weight, we are looking at 150.3 grams. So not bad at all. And now that you guys got some weight, I'll go ahead and add all that information that I went over on the screen for you guys, for those people that missed it, or if there's anything else that I missed, you guys can go ahead and look on it. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. But without much further ado, let's go ahead and go outside and get our first impressions flight on this bad boy. All right, so now that you guys have learned a little bit more about the HD Micro from T-Motor, I'm gonna be getting my first impressions here on an actual micro quad. I don't believe I've flown an actual two inch micro quad, so I am very curious to see how this thing is gonna perform. Uh, I am running a 450 milliamp 4S pack, and then after my first run, I'm gonna be doing an HD run straight out of the run cam, raw footage, that way you guys can see what that looks like, but for the first impressions flight, I'm gonna be recording my DVR. That way you guys can see the different voltage, whatever it shows up on the screen, basically what I'm gonna be looking at if you're gonna be flying this straight from the um, 
FPV feed and not recording, but then I'm gonna record raw footage that way you guys can see for those people that are actually interested in a two inch micro quad for some HD footage. But without much further ado, let's go ahead and get my first impressions run on the T-Motor micro two inch quad. Let's do that thing. Alrighty, so here we go. Let's go ahead and arm this bad boy and hope we get no crashes. So, like I said, I am recording from the DVR. Am I really getting an RSSI warning? Well, I guess I'm gonna stay close to here, but. I am getting some slight jelloing that I do see on the um, on the DVR, but overall, <laughs> dude, overall this is actually flying pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, I did kind of think um, the micro wouldn't feel like an actual five inch quad but it actually does like i'm not doing any compensations you know i kind of uh came into this kind of thinking i was uh going to have like sag or like having to put more throttle around turns but so far i'm not and the reason i'm staying close is because i keep getting these rssi warnings just like that one there so just trying to keep it safe And then, so as you can see, it, it displays the uh, cell voltage as well, individual cell voltage, which right now I'm at 3.4, what, 3.5 or so? If you could just go looking down there, and then it just shows the overall voltage as well for those people that um, just like to look at the voltage. And you could also always adjust that through the uh, Betaflight OSD on your uh, GUI. So if you don't like all that stuff being displayed, you could just put simply the voltage or you could put nothing on there. So I do not know why I have an RSSI warning continuously. I probably set my antennas in a wrong place. Probably just because they're right next to the uh, whip antenna, which is a VTX. So that's probably interfering with the uh, RX. But overall, I want to see how much flight time I get of this 450 right here. I do hear a little bit of oscillations. Uh, everything is stock just due to the fact that i didn't want to um tune anything because this is how you get it out of the box they kind of claim claim it to be a pmp so plug and play the only thing you really add is that a receiver so i don't i still don't know why i'm having all these rsi warnings uh if this was a brand new receiver that i put on here i'm at 12.3114 so yeah that's about it right there 400 and let's go ahead and come land and there we go. I ended up using 416 milliamps. Max current was at 19 amps. Total arm time was 244. So about almost three minutes there. Minimum battery, 9.9 .9 volts. And like you guys know me, that's how I run my batteries. But let me go ahead and pick my quad up and basically conclude this video for you guys. So that right there was my first impressions flight on the new HD Micro by T-Motor. So overall thoughts, um, I have to say, I didn't expect it to fly that well, uh, just due to the fact that it is a two inch, and the last time I think I flew like a small prop quad, I don't think firmware and all of that was there yet, so I did expect for me to like have to um, adjust and compensate so much on the throttle around the t turns, like around the poles, the trees, over split S's, but actually I didn't. I did not have to put too much throttle on there, so I think it's time for uh, micros to come, um, come to start back up because technology is there there's motors that are able to spin up a prop nice there's props out there there's batteries there's hd cameras there so you're actually able to record an hd footage now for those people that love micros but couldn't put a gopro on their two inch or one inch or even a three inch quad so so i like it i give it a thumbs up and um another thing i am going to be doing another review on another hd micro quad by x flight i mean by iflight so stay tuned for that. Be sure you subscribe down below. But without much further ado, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed this video. And peace out.